Hey guys, it's Nate here. Today I want to talk about SQL case whens and how they show up on interviews as well as on the job. So case whens are a really simple concept, but they're really popular because they allow you to categorize your data efficiently, especially dealing with dirty data. So I'm going to show you three different case whens and how they show up on an interview or on the job. So the goal is to understand when to apply a case when, how to actually apply it, but then most importantly, all the little nuances behind what is happening when you are applying a case when. So let's run through these three different data science interview questions really quickly. So please subscribe to my channel if you like content like this. This content is aimed for the advanced beginner to intermediate data scientists. It's really content for people that are, say, preparing for their first data science job for an interview or for people with up to three, four years of data science experience. All right, so thank you in advance for watching. All right, here's the first question. It's by Airbnb. The question is called host popularity rental prices. So you're given a table of rental property searches by users. Find the minimum, average, and maximum rental prices for each host popularity rating. The host popularity rating is defined as below. So obviously this is a perfect opportunity to implement a case when because you have these categories, these popularity ratings that you want to add to the data, right? So if we take a look at the data set real quick, each row in this data set is a user search. So a user is searching for a property here. So each row also represents a host. So if we go to the number of reviews, it basically shows that this host here has one review and some have zero, some have two and some have 10. So what you're really trying to do here is based off of the number you see, you want to add a label to them, right? New, rising, trending up, popular, or hot, depending on the number that you see in this column here. So this is the perfect use case to implement a case when. So let's build that logic right now. So let me quickly show you the code and then let's explain line by line what everything is doing. So the question is really asking us to find the minimum, average, and maximum price of these categories here. So the first step is really to build a view where you're able to apply these categories to the data set. So what I'm doing is building that view here. So basically what I have is my own primary key for a host ID. Because these are user searches, there is no host ID, so I kind of made one up myself. Then I took the number of reviews that's gonna be used for the case when. Uh, I took the price because we want to find the average minimum and maximum price. Uh, so all of these are basically needed to compute the output. Um, here is when I am applying the case when right here. So really what I wanna do is explain the nuances on how to implement a case when and what is actually working behind the scenes here. So maybe actually the first thing I'll do is just run this code. Um, and so what you see is basically this host ID, see the number of reviews, and the price and then the host popularity rating. So one nuance I wanna explain is that case whens will always go from top to bottom in terms of applying logic. So it will go through each line one by one and try to apply logic to see which one is actually true, right? So if we take a look at this data point right here, or this row, it says number of reviews zero it will then apply this logic here and it categorized this row as new. What this actually means behind the scenes is I can actually overlap numbers because if we have five reviews, this line of code is gonna ring true and then the rising label will be applied to that row and it'll never get to this third line of code here where it's also true. So let's see if we can find an example like this. I'm gonna say where number of reviews equals five. So I basically changed this third line in the case when to say between five and 15. What we see here is that even though the number of reviews is five, it's applied the rising category and not the trending up category, even though both of these rows are true. So SQL needs to pick one, it's gonna pick the first one because it's running top to bottom, right? So if you actually wanna test this, change this to a four, run this query again, then you get trending up as uh, the category. 
So you can overlap numbers like this, but it's considered bad practice because it's actually confusing to anybody that is looking and reading this code. So I never overlap the numbers. I will keep it like this so that it's just more logical to anybody reading. So that's definitely a nuance that you should know. So the next useful tip when implementing a case when, what I like to do both on the job and, and in interviews is to split my logic into as many separate steps as possible, right? So this question is asking us to find the minimum, the average, and the maximum price for each of these categories here. So I'm gonna actually make this a CTE. So I will call this CTE with new view as, and then basically apply the minimum average and max aggregations to this CTE here. So I have select host popularity, uh, which is the rating here. And then I'm just basically finding the minimum average and max price because I have the price column in this new view table here, right? So if I run this query, I get the host popularity rating, I get the minimum average and max price. If I check the solution, I get this correct. So that's just a good tip when solving any problem because an interviewer will understand your approach and your logic throughout. And on the job, somebody reading your code will also understand what your logic and approach is and can easily make modifications. So now let's take a look at the second example here. In the first example, we dealt with numerical values. In this example, we're going to deal with categorical values here. So this question reads, find the average inspection score for every available inspection type and business type combinations. Business types are restaurants, cafe, taqueria, kitchen, garden, school, and other. Output the result along with the corresponding business type and the inspection type. If we take a look at the data, because this, this question is not super obvious to me, I do not see a business type anywhere. So what that assumption is actually saying is that using business name here, this column, try to categorize each business based off of what you find in the name. So if you see school here as a business type and see school in the business name, categorize that as a school, right? Same with restaurants. So basically try your best to categorize the data. So this is another great example of when to implement a case when. It doesn't necessarily have to be with numerical values. It could be with categorical values like this. So let me show you really quick how I do it. Okay, so just like the first example, we have the inspection type, we have the inspection score because what we want to do is find the average inspection score based off of these business types. So here is the case when and a real good way to actually label and categorize your data if it's categorical is to use this I like function here. We'll basically try to find the word restaurant in the business name and these percentage symbols here are just wild cards. So basically ignore anything to the left of restaurant, ignore anything to the right of restaurant. So if we use this case when here, you then are able to categorize the business type based off of the business name. So actually to make it a little easier, let's add business name. All right, so what we have now is the business name and then the business type here. So we look at restaurants, they found restaurant, and I like basically just means that ignore the case. If it's all capital cases or it's all lowercase, just ignore it, treat it as the same, and then apply the restaurant tag, all right? And so if we go here, restaurant, 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 cafe, cafe. So using a case when is just a great way to categorize your data, even if your data is just text. All right, so let's finish up the solution and find the average inspection score for each of these business types. Okay, so I chose to take that original code right here and use it as a subquery. So now I have the average inspection score on the outer part of the query. Okay, so that's the second example, basically using a case when on categorical columns. Let's get to the third example. So this third example is probably the implementation that you're gonna use most in interviews. In the previous two examples, we basically built either a subquery or a CTE and then built the aggregations on top of that. In this example here, we're gonna actually combine those two together. Again, this is really common in interviews because it's just a quick and dirty way to check if you know how to implement case wins and know how to take aggregations from these case wins. 
Also, it's pretty popular on the job as well because like I said, it's quick and dirty, it's efficient. So you can get the statistical aggregations you want by writing quick and concise code. Okay, so let's get to this question. This question is by Facebook, it's called Top Engagements. The question reads, we have two tables that contain search results. The Facebook search results table contains the search result positions as displayed to the user. And the Facebook search event table stores whether or not the user clicked on the particular search result. Write a query to calculate the percentage of search results that were positioned in the top three and clicked by the user. So we need to actually join these two tables together to be able to find this answer. So let's break this problem into different steps. So let's do the first step first where we want to join these two tables together. It's going to look a little bit like this where we are joining Facebook search results with search events. We're going to do a left join here because the assumption here is that search results has all of the search results and search events could be a subset of search results, right? That we don't actually know if that's 100% true, so it's not going to hurt to use a left join. We're not going to lose any data is what I'm trying to say. So we do this, we see the position here and whether a user has actually clicked. So if we read the question here, write a query to calculate the percentage of search results that were positioned in the top three and clicked by the user. We want to find rows where the position is three or less and has clicked equals yes. So this is a perfect implementation of the case when where we can apply these two logic together. So basically we have a simple case when here. It's basically looking at whether or not the position column is in the top three, and then it's also looking at whether the user has clicked on that search result. So whether or not we see a yes. If both of those are true, we want to then put in the search ID value. Otherwise, we're gonna put in a null. So if we run this query, we should basically get either a null or an actual value. So I ran the query here, the case when basically gives me either the search ID here or just a bunch of nulls. So this is exactly what we want. So when you're calculating a percentage, you have a numerator and a denominator. Obviously this is gonna be in the numerator. So what we wanna do now is count up every single time we get a search result ID and ignore all of the nulls. So we can quickly apply an aggregation here, count, to count all of this up and then count will ignore all of the nulls there and only count the non-null values. All right, so if we run this, we get four. So there are four instances where the search result was in the top three and the user clicked on that search result. So now we have to define the denominator. Okay, so that is actually really easy. We could just use a count star because a count star basically will count all the rows whether or not it has a value or a null. So if we just run this query, we get a count of 26. So really what we want to do to find the percentage is divide four by 26 and get that percentage. So I'm just gonna combine things together here and see what we get. We should get a ratio, right? So what we could do is multiply that out by 100 and name the column percentage. If we check the solution, we get the right answer. So that's it for the third example. But this implementation of the case when is very, very popular in data science interview questions because it's a really easy way to test if a candidate knows how to implement a simple case when, and then also take the aggregate of that and change it into some sort of metric, some KPI that all data scientists need to know how to create. So then in addition to seeing this on interviews, you would probably be implementing this on your job. So those are the three examples I wanted to show. Again, I wanted to just highlight three different case whens, how it would be implemented to solve a problem, and also the nuances behind each line of code in a case when, and what is going on in the back end when the code is actually running. So I hope this was fairly useful. If you want me to break down other concepts, either in SQL or in Python, please let me know what sort of concepts you want me to break down. All right, subscribe to this channel if you like content like this, and I hope to see you watching the next video. Thanks.